from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Beat the Champ as we roll along here at Classic Lanes in Kenmore. And speaking of rolling and on a roll, Jeremy Zimmerman is the guy right now. He comes back as our defending champion in the middle of a six-match winning streak, Sue. Yeah, I feel like this show really does make stars out of people, and Jeremy is our star of the month here at, at Classic. So I expect to see more. I really do. Yeah, he bowled really smart, really well last week in winning the three matches. The competitors for this week, Joe Montanti Jr., Jason Shuby, and a veteran beat the champ bowler in Mike Kemp. Right. Well, I think he's going to be challenged just a bit because some of these bowlers are going to get into the same spot that he's using on the lane. So now we have to see how that matches up. Janelle, uh, what are you what are you hanging out here with? What uh, what do we got to show off here? So this is actually an emoji ball. I was talking with Brian about you know what's going on at Classic, and he was telling me about some of the cool leagues they have. Um, and one of the leagues they have is an emoji themed league. And once you complete it, um, you actually get an emoji ball. Well, there kind you go. Cool. I'll, I'll tell you who loves you, baby, right now. <laughs> it's Jeremy Zimmerman. Loves the way he's bowling. Let's see if he keeps loving it. It's time to get rolling on Beat the Champ. Match number one features our defending champ Zimmerman against a newcomer to the Beat the Champ show. His name is Joe Montanti Jr. And he knows this place pretty well. Full-time employee of Classic Lanes at the front desk and the snack bar. So let's see if Joe has a little home lane yeah. advantage that he can use to knock off the red-hot Jeremy Zimmerman. We'll, we'll assume that he's thrown one or two practice games here before. I don't think so, huh? If Brian Borowski gives him the keys and lets him close up, yeah. he might get thrown a lot of uh, practice balls here. So there's the Beat the Champ debut for Joe Montanti Jr. Nice shot out of the gate. 29 years old from Tonawanda, been bowling since he's about six years old. Nice 218 average for Joe, who bowls here on Monday nights, Tuesdays at Kenmore Lanes, and Thursdays at Kenmore as well, too. Spare to open things up for Joe Montanti Jr. Always feels good to get that first frame out of the way. Yep. Get that first 10 pin out of the way, too. And here's Jeremy Zimmerman, the 34 year old from Lockport, who is putting himself into our Beat the Champ record books on a current six match winning streak. And a strike to start things off for Jeremy. And that shot looked exactly like his first shot of the tournament. It's, it's got that groove. He's still looking at the 10 board through that perfect. And that's what he wants, to have to move as little as possible. At Beat the Champ TV and like us on the Facebook page for all the latest information about results and qualifying. We've still got some qualifying to go for next month at Rapids Bowling Center. So the Facebook page and the Twitter feed, your best avenues to get that information. Second frame for Jeremy Zimmerman. Overall record on Beat the Champ, seven wins and three losses. The bulk of those coming in this oh. winning streak. Lots of wobble on the 10 pin, but it won't go down. A little love tap, just wobble, not enough. but they don't go down. <laughs> well, we, you saw uh, you saw Janelle had the emoji ball working, and uh, you know, see, they got the UB ball going for, for me you? here. I think that one's for me. Uh, matter of fact, Bulls play their second home football game later this afternoon. You can finish watching this show and head on over to UB Stadium for their game against Florida Atlantic, second home football game of the year. So there you go. We got a little Bulls action going here at Classic Lanes. Shameless self-promotion. Shameless <laughs> self-plugging, yes. And if you can't get to the game, you can always listen to me on the radio. So. Well, I, I recommend that. that. I, I recommend that one. There you go. So we're having a little fun. You know, I think we're, next step, next step is to have your face on one of these that we can put on the desk here. <laughs> oh wow. <Right? laughs> That would be no. something for a bowler to have her face on a bowling ball. I bet hey, nobody else could say I that. Bet, no, I mean, but you can do almost anything with these balls now, so. So Jeremy Zimmerman opens up with a strike and a spare, and Joe Montante with a spare in the first frame, looking at a spare here in the second. Two good pocket, two good pocket shots for Joe. Again, we were talking a little bit about how 
Um, overall, this place is very good for, for carry, the mm -hmm. way the pins bounce and all of that. But when you see a, a, a pair that the scores are down a little bit, it tends to be because of, you know, that might not be the best carry pair in, in the house. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing here on lanes 31 and 32. I mean, they get to the pocket okay, but they have a little trouble with that 10 pin. Saw the vitals on Joe Montanti Jr. from Tonawanda, 29 years old. As we mentioned, works here at Classic Lanes. Nice smooth stroke for Joe. Just missed the pocket and leaves himself a lot of pins. Well, over the course of um, Jeremy's reign, he's built himself up a little wall of oil because his ball is going right to left and he's getting a build up there. He's got his groove and then a build up to the left of him. And when these bowlers with more hand try to go through that, they end up washing out. We've seen quite a few washouts today on that left lane because the bowlers with more hand are, are cutting through Jeremy's wall of oil that he's built up. Got to have more hand, right? More <laughs> hand is always good. Well, it's more hand or less hand. Like that's <laughs> it, that, that twinner thing. Uh, it can sometimes be problematic when you've got that big pool of oil. Yeah, and the other thing that Jeremy has done incredibly well in this streak, and particularly last month on the show, was just be solid and let his opponents hand the matches to him. Because on the first week of shows, he won over Mike Zarcone 237 to 216, then he beat George Shableski 198 to 144, and then beat Bill Swyatt 233 to 186. So two of his opponents barely broke 200, um, which means Jeremy was just out there striking and sparing only one open frame in three matches a week ago. So he's just being smart. And there's the second open frame. As soon as I mentioned it, look what happens. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. I'm here on Beat the Champ with Joe Montanti Jr., a new face to Beat the Champ. Coming up against a strong champion there with uh, Jeremy Zimmerman running uh, six in a row. What are you thinking today? I just gotta go out there and make good shots and hopefully I'll carry and hopefully I'll beat him. What did you find in qualifying here at, at Classic Lanes? Yeah, it was a little different than the typical house shot. It was, about, it was a little bit longer. The outsides were a little more oilier than they usually are. So, they just got to make good shots. Well, you made the show, and uh, that's the first step, and now you get to uh, be a winner, maybe. Yeah, hopefully. It took me nine tries to get here, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have some luck today. All right, hopefully ten times the charm. Good luck today. Thank you. Another strike, three in a row. And now, for one of the first times in the last couple of weeks, someone's put a little pressure on Jeremy Zimmerman. Yeah, Jeremy's actually found himself down four pins here. So um, it'll be interesting to see how he reacts because he's going to stay with the same ball and he's going to try another one, but he does have another ball ready. Because it's going to get to the point if Joe keeps striking that Jeremy's going to have to do something different because nine spares isn't, isn't going to be enough. Seventh frame now, Jeremy Zimmerman. Well, this time the 10 pin went down, but the six did not. Well, see, what, what, what happens is he's trying to hit higher flush. That's the only thing that's going to make him strike because this ball's not driving through the 1-3 pocket. So in order to hit higher flush, which means higher up on, on, on the, in the 1-3 pocket, he has to pull it a little bit more, and that's going to run the risk of, of four pins. The six pin was a little bit high. So if you're getting a four pin, 10 pin reaction that normally does mean to change balls in order to strike, you know, he's, again, he's staying out of trouble, but Joe keeps striking, he's gonna have to go for broke and, and try to strike. Mike Zarcone pushed Jeremy a little bit in the first match last week. Um, it was tight right down to the 10th frame, I believe. Um, but other than that, Jeremy has been pretty good about not being able to bowl his own game and not worry about his opponents. Till now. And there's one of the nicer throws of the day for Jeremy Zimmerman, a strike in the eighth frame. 
I want to remind you that the top qualifier each month in our round of 24 wins a television valued at $500 from our friends at Dirt Cheap TV. And for qualifying here at Classic Lanes, it was Josh Vogt. We'll see Josh on the show next week. Um, we still got a little bit of qualifying left to go for next month at the Rapids Bowling Center. And again, the uh, top qualifier in that top 24 takes the TV. Oh. And a 10 pin hold up for Joe Montanti Jr. in the eighth frame. The great equalizer. The, now what happens here, because he didn't strike, even though he's still up a few pins, Jeremy is on a strike, so Jeremy can now go ahead by striking in the ninth. Spare, spare for Joe. Nice round of applause from the gang here at Classic Lanes, where we mentioned Joe works, so I'm sure he's got lots of friends here. Lots of people that are looking to uh, curry favor with uh, excellent <laughs> Blaine choices when they uh, when Joe's working the front desk. And it's a ninth frame wow. strike for Joe Montanti Jr. That is four of the last five. What a great shot. He did end up moving everything just a little bit right. And Learn, picking up Jeremy's um, spot there that we're talking about being Jeremy's hold spot. Um, Joe's figured it out and he's actually using that for himself. So he's in the same area of the lane now that Jeremy is. So there's been a few matches that Jeremy has won where they've pretty much been decided by the time we get to the ninth frame, but not this one. Not this one. Coming off the strike, this is a big one and he gets another strike. Very good. He, he definitely moved a little bit on that one because he hit a little bit lighter, but he went for the swisher hit as opposed to the flush hit because the flush hit is just not carrying. So good move on his part. He, he moved his feet just a little bit to the left and got a different angle to the pocket and it worked. So now as Jeremy moves to the 10th frame, here's a chance for him to set himself up for a win and put the pressure on Joe. Well, actually, Jeremy could strike out here and win this match. Well, there you go. Even better he put himself that. in a six pin advantage by, by striking there in the ninth and getting that double. Another strike, three in a row. Jeremy crouching down to get a good angle on great that shot, one. Great shot, great shot. This is a different th different situation he's in this time. And most of the time he's already been in a commanding situation here at the end of the game. This is forcing him to make moves and figure out how to strike when he isn't striking. So, so very impressive here. Looking for a seventh consecutive win is Jeremy Zimmerman. The all-time beat the champ record. 10 set by Kevin Bianco, who ended Kevin Bianco's 10 match winning streak. Jeremy Zimmerman. There you go. But I believe it was six before that, so so Kevin crushed it. Great shot. Four in a row now for Jeremy Zimmerman, and if he gets one more, he'll win this match. He actually needs five pins here, five or better. So it's a pretty simple task in front of Jeremy Zimmerman. One would like to think he did the hard part already. Yes, but. he did. <laughs> Four strikes in a row was the hard part to get him here to need just the six. Got it, got all 10, and it's a win for Jeremy Zimmerman. A seventh consecutive victory for Jeremy. This time he takes out Joe Montanti Jr. We'll come back, talk to Joe, and get you ready for Jeremy's attempt to win eight in a row when we return to Beat the Champ from here at Classic Lane. Final score of this one, 215 to 188. Another victory for Jeremy Zimmerman over Joe Montanti Jr. Joe, you put a lot of pressure on him as much as anybody has over the last couple of weeks. Were you kind of feeling that you had a shot at this one? Yeah, I did. Unfortunately, the third and fourth frames got me. I just got a little fast, those shots, and missed my target outside and left two washouts and missed them both, and that was the difference in the match pretty much. How difficult is it when you're an opponent bowling a guy who's sort of red hot right now and not making a lot of mistakes? 
Uh, it's definitely difficult. You have to definitely make every shot mm -hmm. and make every shot count. And unfortunately, when I did hit the pocket, I didn't carry every shot, which I needed a couple of those carries to beat them, and it didn't happen. All right, Brian, you're going to make him go back to work now? Definitely. Uh, <laughs> this is not your paycheck, but uh, good bowling anyways. <laughs> well, it's good to have you on the show, Joe. Congratulations on a very good debut to beat the champ. We got more matches to come, including Jeremy's attempts to win an eighth in a row. That's next on Beat the Champ. I'm here with Jason Shuby, one of our contenders today on Beat the Champ. Been a little while since you've been here. We saw you at Manor 2 a few months ago. What did it take to get back here? Uh, I've been bowling over the summer in a, in a sports shot league, which really uh, helped sharpen up my game. And I think that definitely helped get me back here. All right, well, that would be very important because we got a modified house shout out here today. Did you find that to be uh, play into your scoring? Yes, I did. Um, I was able to stay much farther in than everybody else, and I think that definitely helped me. Okay, well, that could be very helpful you today, so good luck. Thank you very much. The latest challenger to end the streak of Jeremy Zimmerman is Jason Shuby. We'll see Jason uh, right there in the red shirt making his second appearance here on Beat the Champ, but it'll be Jeremy that will start off this match as he puts his seven-match winning streak on the line. Let's see if he can continue this outstanding stretch of bowling. So Jeremy's playing games here with who's going first, who's going second. He, he keeps shifting he, back and he, forth, he keeps right? Shifting back and forth. So as the lanes change a little bit, and whichever lane he likes his ball reaction best on, that's the one he wants to finish on. As a bowler, when you're making that decision, what are the parameters that you make it by? Just how you're feeling, where where you want to start, strategy, you know, what goes into that decision? Because we've seen J Jeremy shift back and forth. It's definitely which lane you have the best ball reaction on. You want to finish on the lane that you think you have the best chance to strike, and that's um, obviously changed for Jeremy because he's gone back to starting. So here's Jason Shuby making, again, his second appearance here on Beat the Champ. Uh, first, vic first appearance was a loss back at Manor 2 a couple of months ago when he lost to Andy Reddig. And that first throw for Jason Shuby will leave the four pin. How's that for playing the lanes totally different than Jeremy is? It's, it's you know, um, you got to go to your strength, and it seems like his strength is more of uh, inside. There you go. I'm live now. There you go. <laughs> we need just, to hear you, Brian. <laughs> well, it just goes to Much show you Much as we you like that... looking at you, we need to hear you. Yeah, exactly. well, that's scary thought. <laughs> it just goes to show you that this is a sport where it's not necessary to play the exact same way that there's only one shot and only one place to play on the lane, because he is inside a fourth arrow. Well, you always go to your strength, and that, that's the most important thing. Um, you know, no matter who you are in bowling, everyone has unique style. I mean, we've seen on Beat the Champ for the last year and a half, everyone has a different style, and you know, certain aspects of the game is their strong point. And Jason's strong point seems to be more going inside. And it's, and it's all about repetition, not about uh, whether straight is good or bad, or whether hooking it more is good or bad. I mean, everybody likes to think that hooking it because it looks so pretty because the pins splash all over the place. But truth be told, you know, Gary Kenyon's had a great career playing them very, very straight. Doesn't make it bad. I mean, you just have to be consistent. And that's why I always tell my junior bowlers, it's, you know, again, what you said, repetition, is doing the same thing over and over again. That's what creates success. By the way, uh, Based on the comments that we got from your television performance a couple weeks ago, that's why we placed the poop emoji ball. Right well, in front I appreciate of you there. that. Yes, uh, you know, things happen, but uh, you know, I'm okay you know, with when my you when you enter this world of the media, you got to be open to uh, both the positive and the negative comments. So. Uh, I think I can handle that. I know you can. <laughs> No, if you missed it, Brian and Matt Sazowski did a wonderful job replacing us a couple weeks ago uh, when we were at Alley Brandt when you and I bowled and they did the television work. So yeah. and, and Matt got to air out all of yeah, his Oh, yes. It all was all his his cleansing <laughs> session for Matt Sazowski, <laughs> who I love. He's my favorite bowler. Uh, always, gonna, I think all that time. was a Seinfeld episode, you know, <laughs> Festivus, <laughs> airing out your grievances. That's right. We, he aired his grievances, and now I am convinced that Matt is my favorite 
beat the champ. I haven't heard any mention of any left-handed bowlers no, at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so strikes in the first two frames for Jeremy Zimmerman as he just continues to be on a roll here. Make it three in a row. And there's another confidence builder. He, you know, the, got inside just a touch and came up a little high and he was able to trip that four. Yeah, trip four is always a sign of, I, I look at it as though it, it, it takes a loose swing to trip a four. So you, ha you can't be tight. You're, you are, you're feeling pretty good about how you're bowling when you're tripping fours. Well, now he has a lot more room for error. You know, now he's got a few more boards when he keeps wearing that out throughout all these shows. He's wearing that, that lane out just to his advantage. Jason Shuby is 34 years old from Alden, New York, an IT professional at ECMC. He's been there 11 years. He has been bowling for 30 of those 34 years as you get a look at Janelle on the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard and a good cheering section on hand for Jason Shuby here. His parents, Jack and Marianne, his grandparents, Joe and Mary Ellen, and his girlfriend, Michelle, all here to see if Jason Shuby can do what no one's been able to do for the last couple of weeks, which is beat Jeremy Zimmerman. And it is spares in the first three frames for Jason Shuby. Well, Jason throws it good. He's got he's got more uh, more power game than Jeremy, but and Jeremy's ball reaction is still looking pretty good even after seven wins. It is uh, the, you know the prior match when he kept leaving those tens. You know, fortunately he made most of them. Um, you know, the ball was just not coming right in the pocket. And, it seemed like later in that match he was carrying when he was coming up a little bit later. Well, he made a great, right, he made a great adjustment. Instead of trying to pound the pocket and stay in the pocket, he went for that light swisher hit by making a little bit of a move to the left. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Jason bowls regularly at Abbott Lanes on Monday nights and at Transit Lanes during the summer and Tuesday, but now the summer is gone and we are fully into bowling season, right? Yay. Your time of year for both of you is <laughs> finally here, right? Summer's fun, but uh, it's back to bowling now. It seems since fall, the, the schedule gets so much heavier, doesn't it? Like, like all of a sudden every day, your, your agenda is just full. A little bit of an early hook on that one, and it missed the pocket and leaves the six and the ten pins. Yeah, he has to be very accurate where he's playing, and that was the lane not to do that on. Yes. But this is a one-pin match now, so what looked like Jeremy was running, running away with it tightened right up to a one pin match. That's what an open frame will do. Good spare pickup in the sixth for Jason Shuby. A little bit of the perspective on what Jeremy has been able to do now. His seven match winning streak is the second longest winning streak that we have had on Beat the Champ. Kevin Bianco owns the record at 10 in a row, and then there was a whole group of guys that were at six in a row. Tyler Molina did it twice, Mike Sarcone did it, Matt White did it, but uh, to be able to break through that log jam at six and get to seven in a row puts Jeremy Zimmerman in second place and uh, still with a chance to keep it moving. Great shot. Uh, if you just think about the possibility of having a 10 match winning streak by Kevin Bianco, ended by Jeremy Zimmerman, and there's a chance Jeremy Zimmerman could go on a 10 match winning streak of his own. And maybe more. And it's been almost an impossible number to get that high. I mean, it, it, it seemed like six was the, the spot where everybody got caught up. I think that's something that's been a little more interesting that we've started to see a little more dominating stretches on the show from Molina to Bianco to Zarcone to Zimmerman. That seems to be like every month we get a long stretch. Great shot. So other than the open and the fourth, Jeremy Zimmerman has struck his way through the first seven frames. 
So, Brian, it was kind of interesting. This month here at Classic, we have quite a few uh, new faces that have that that are making their debut on the show. You know, we've been around for you know about 19 months now. So, it's I mean, it's nice to see new faces. Did you see um, you know, like your league bowlers, or did you notice new people trying out this past month? Well, we we always I mean every tournament that I've seen, there's always newer faces, but it's always always great to see you know new people on TV. That was when we when we uh, started this uh, the show. We wanted more people bowling. We wanted different faces. But we think that people uh, that are watching this want to see you know someone different once in a while and and hope and hope for that underdog. Um, Unlike McGregor, but uh, <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice mix of the uh, of the old and the new. Because if you have your favorites, um, that you know sometimes from seeing somebody a lot, you get to know them and you, and, you, and you like the way they bowl, and that's nice too. And then you get the new people on and and, and get to meet somebody else. Yeah, just to show that you know just about anyone can you know participate in this um, during the qualifying, and you know anyone not just the top bowlers can make it into the TV show. And that's where we're hoping for the success is getting new people, new blood, and more participants. Right now, Three, that four in a row now for Jeremy. Now that Zimmerman. everybody's back to bowling and everybody's um, you know in the, in in the group and in, in the habit of habit of bowling, uh, now's the time to get out and and give this a try because nobody's rusty anymore. We're already four, three weeks in. Exactly, and the entry fee is extremely low. I mean, that was the whole purpose behind that. You know, only thirty dollars to have a chance to, you know, make quite a bit of money because we do have money in the qualifier event. You know, where first place can be a couple hundred bucks, and you know, for only a thirty dollar entry, and then the opportunity to win money on TV um, makes um, a huge win. Really great point because Jeremy's already accumulated seven hundred dollars. And going for 800 now. Correct. And uh, this can really add up as, as for a $30 entry. Exactly. No, and and he didn't even enter in classic because he was right. the reigning champion. Right. So. I mean, I right. So this is all gravy money for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only eligible at the uh, at the bar here at Classic Lanes, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're making him. We're switching to Genesee, though. He's got a drink. That's Genesee. right. All right. So we're here's where we're at in this match. Jeremy Zimmerman has been amazing on a stretch of five consecutive strikes. Jason's had two in a row. Isn't going to get three in a row. But again, he's bowling really well. But he's bowling against a guy who's just on fire right now. So Jason will attempt to pull off the spare here in the ninth frame, but he's in a pretty decent hole at the moment. Okay, so Jason needs to strike out to make Jeremy spare. Anything less than a strikeout and Jeremy's gonna win sitting on the bench. Well, how many times have have we come to how many times have we come to a 10th frame with Jeremy where he is clearly in control? I think that's been one of the overriding themes of this winning streak. And Jason's not gonna get the strike out. Jeremy's going to be win eight in a row. Amazing. Jeremy Zimmerman's streak will continue. This has been one of his more impressive performances. A lot of strikes on the board for Jeremy Zimmerman. And he's going to come up with an eighth consecutive victory. We'll come back and wrap up another impressive performance from Jeremy. Talk to Jason about the match. That is when Beat the Champ continues from here at Classic Lanes in Kenmore. We're back right after this. Jeremy Zimmerman's eighth consecutive win is a 244 to 200 decision over Jason Shuby. I know you're focused, Jason, on your own game, but when you're bowling against a guy that's that hot and he's putting up good numbers, how hard is it to not look over there and see what's going on? Well, it's tough because you know you do have to bowl, keep bowling strikes, and uh, obviously he's bowling really good right now. Um, take me through your performance. How did it go today? Uh, I was undecided on which ball to use right off the bat, and I think I chose the wrong ball. 
I made a switch around the fourth frame. It worked out really well, but uh, come ninth, tenth frame, I just did not throw good shots. All right, Brian, make him feel a little better here. Well, thanks for bowling beat the champ, yep. and here's a little bit something for you. Thanks, sir. All right. All right, so a chance to go for nine in a row with another win is coming up next. Jeremy Zimmerman trying to stay hot. We'll see how he does when we return to Classic Lanes right after this. Here with Mike Kemp. Is it Clark Kent or Superman today? Hopefully Superman. All right. Well, you're gonna take Superman. You got a tough day out here, but tell me a little bit about qualifying. Uh, qualifying was good. You know, I shot 771 to begin with, and I shot 705, so I feel pretty good. Well, you know, beat the champ has been about streaks, and if anybody can go on a streak, it's you. So, uh, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, hopefully. I mean, last month or last time I was on was a little disappointing. So hopefully this time will be a little better and be more competitive for sure. All right, good luck today. All right, thank you. All right. The strive for nine in a row for Jeremy Zimmerman. We'll have to go through this guy, Mike Kemp, one of our better beat the champ bowlers. And honestly, since facing Mike Zarcone in the first match a week ago, probably the toughest competition that Jeremy will face since he started the streak by beating Kevin Bianco. Mike Kemp has been outstanding on this show. He and Jeremy are now tied for sixth overall and most wins on this show. So whoever wins this match is going to get their 10th overall beat the champ win. Um, this is going to be a good one, Sue. This is as good a test as Jeremy will face. Yeah, this this is uh, definitely, like you said, this is the most experienced bowler other than Mike Sarcone that he's met. And um, they play also the same similar area of the lane. So whatever advantage Jeremy has, you know, you would think that Mike would have too. And he's used this strategy again of flipping the bowlers and making Mike start first. So I don't know what he's up to. Are these trying to keep us on our toes? Or? That's okay. <laughs> That's good. So Jeremy Zimmerman with an eight match winning streak, an overall record of nine and three on the show, trying to keep the streak alive and the first frame will leave the 10 pin. Well, this is the first ball change that I've seen Jeremy make. And he's gone a long way with no ball change. I mean, it's it's sort of been miraculous. that same blue and orange ball that he's used yeah. almost the whole time. Yeah, every time we've seen him on the show, he's used that ball. He's had a lot of success with that ball. But he's chosen to switch balls, which, you know, we'll see what happens. You never, you, you never know, because it changes everything. It changes your feet, changes how it reads the lane. What kind of, what do you think he, the intention was behind the ball change? Well, I think that the lanes are starting to hook for him. And he doesn't want to be taken out of his zone. He's, he's comfortable in that spot. He, he likes throwing it right to left like that and eventually he was just going to be forced inside of that spot with that other ball so this ball goes it has a, a little less surface it's a little shinier so it's going to skid a little bit longer and i think he's hoping to recreate that with this ball perfect head pin hit for the strike for jeremy zimmerman so now mike kemp making his ninth different appearance here on beat the champ overall record of nine and six we last saw him a couple of about a month or two ago when he lost at Alley Brant Lanes. Right. So when he, when he first started out, he had we, we laughed that he had a bullseye on his back. I mean, people shot like monster scores at him. Yep. And then all of a sudden, he just turned it around, and it was very difficult to beat. He's had five and four match winning streaks here on Beat the Champ. Has Mike Kemp. So he knows how to put a string of victories together. So that's what makes this match really intriguing between these two really good bowlers. Mike is 32 years old from Cheektowaga, averaged with 230, full-time occupation as an analyst at M&T Bank. He's been bowling since he was five years old. His dad is here cheering him on at Classic Lanes. And I think the one thing, if you've been a regular boat viewer of the show, not only do you know that Mike is really good, but you know Mike bowls in his own zone. That yep. when he sits down, he does not look up. He does not watch his opponent. He just bowls where he needs to worry about what he's thinking about. He's kind of getting a reputation as being the uh, Clark Kent of Beat the Champ. <laughs> he's got that Clark Kent look. So yes, he does. Whether it's going to be Clark Kent and turn the Superman on the lanes is the question. 
And that was an odd hit for Jeremy Zimmerman. That We haven't seen something lose steam like that. In well, a while. This, the thing is with this ball change, you're going to see a different. It's going um, back to the other ball, I think. Yeah, different. Oh, no. Thought he was. Um, things are going to happen when, when, you know, nobody's perfect. When he misses a little bit right, when he misses a little bit left, you, you can expect some different things to happen. He's going to be figuring it out on the fly. So it's. Two spares and a strike in the first three for Jeremy Zimmerman as he slides over to lane number 31 for frame four. Well, I thought he, he picked up the blue and orange ball there and looked at it, and I thought he was going to make the switch as you look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard, but he's going to stick with that yellow-purple one that he's been throwing in this match. Ten pin holds up for Jeremy in frame four. Well, he seems to be battling with a little indecision, and indecision will bring you, um, you know, a little wariness on the lanes, which he's been bowling with quite a bit of confidence going up to this point. So I think he's still wondering whether that's the right move or not, which who could blame him? He's had a lot of success with that other ball. Well, that was really close to missing the spare pickup but he gets it. Playing with a little bit of fire there on that one. Meanwhile, Mike Kemp is open with three strikes. And once again, a lot of the bowlers that Jeremy has beaten in this eight match winning streak have not put a lot of early pressure on Jeremy. Well, he's getting that now from Mike. Lots of wobble break. and a split to deal with for Mike Kemp. Well, that's just a terrible break. That should have been really one or the other, not both. Well, they both sat there and rocked mm -hmm. for 10 seconds. So it's going to be an open frame, nine pins in the fourth for Mike Kemp. And again, after opening with three straight strikes and maybe making Jeremy wonder what is he in for, there's an opportunity for Jeremy to take some advantage, and now Mike has to bounce back. Well, it's interesting because no matter what in these matches that we've watched for the last two weeks, something has always happened to keep Jeremy in the, mat, in the match. So, and he knows that he's gotten a, a few breaks here and there, but it just seems like there's a, there's a little something on his side. Sometimes it's his doing and sometimes it's not, right? Exactly. Sometimes it's what he does to get himself back in the match, meaning Jeremy, exactly. and other times it's what the opponent does to open the door exactly. for him. So now Jeremy looking pretty seriously at the grips and everything there and looks, are we going back to the blue and orange ball? Looks like we are. It looks like it. Took a piece of tape out, so it was obviously feeling a little bit tight. We saw him put the tape in um, earlier in the day. Nice, slow, steady approach. And he gets the late fall on the seven pin for the strike. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Boy, he is just finding that groove right down the pipe between the one and the three pin and knocking them down. Another strike for Jeremy Zimmerman. It's really hard not to be impressed. I mean, for those who have watched um, all of his matches and, and seen him make his moves and seen him do everything that a bowler needs to do in order to be successful over a long string of games, I mean, it's just, it's just impressive. Another strike, Mike Kemp keeping the pressure on. Keeping this a seven pin match, good job there. See, he's had a little trouble on lane 32. So since this one's gonna come right down to the last couple of throws in the 10th frame, which is what we like. So Kemp slides over to lane 31 now, ninth frame for Mike Kemp in a battle here with Jeremy Zimmerman who's going for his ninth straight win. Oh, what a shot. Three strikes in a row for Mike Kemp. You can really see on lane 31 how, the, how you have to play that lane um, to hook and stop because his ball 
bit up early. It started to make its move a little early, and then it just stopped. It didn't keep on going. So, and, and they're both playing that on lane 31. So now Jeremy moves over to 32 for his ninth frame. In what remains a very tight match. Jeremy a little frustrated at that 10 pin again. Well, he didn't love that shot. I mean, but he put it in the pocket, gave it a chance. <laughs> I believe that the purple and yellow ball has been retired for the moment. Is that what that was? <laughs> you don't even want it anywhere near the other ball. <laughs> again, 10 pin spare. He got it for Zimmerman. Okay, so he's gonna have to strike out here to actually um, give himself a chance. So for one of the few times in this winning streak, Jeremy Zimmerman moves to the 10th frame, having to accomplish some things in order to win. It's usually been the other way around. He's usually gone into the 10th with the lead. Once again, that 10 pin continues to frustrate Jeremy Zimmerman. So he'll have to grab this spare and then have one more chance. Mike is just gonna have to have good count in in his frame in order to in order to win those were two big 10 pins for Jeremy but he had a great run fantastic run and it may be coming to an end we'll see and if it does it'll be because of those and those 10 pins have sort of been a little bit of a bugaboo for him all day and even going back to last week a little bit but in generally he's made all his spares and that's been good enough to be able to win against some lesser opponents who haven't put quite as much pressure on him I think we knew that he was going to face as much pressure as he has in a while in this match. And a nice strike in the 10th to finish out for Jeremy Zimmerman. A 207 goes on the board for Jeremy, but as Sue said, Mike just needs good count and he'll end the winning streak. Well, he's going to he's, he's going to need to spare here. He still needs he's still not completely out of the woods. But um, this sh which should be a routine shot for him, but you know, this is bowling, anything can happen. So here's Mike Kemp with a chance to win. And he will get nine pins and play for that 10 pin spare, and that will clinch the win. He will definitely need the spare though. So the match will ride on this shot right here for Mike Kemp in order to get his 10th overall beat the champ victory and end the winning streak of Jeremy Zimmerman. What an amazing run it has been. Here's Kemp. He missed that. He missed it. Jeremy's luck is still How going. about that? Jeremy Zimmerman wins another match because of a missed 10 pin spare from Mike Kemp. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. We'll digest this 207 to 191 win for Jeremy Zimmerman. We'll talk to both guys about an amazing end to this match. And we'll get you ready for next week when Sue and I return. You're watching another classic edition of Beat the Champ from Classic Lanes. Final score of 207 to 191 does not tell the story of this match. And Mike, it comes down to the one pin that you needed for a spare to win. What happened? I don't know. Just missed my mark and made a bad shot there and made a good first shot. I just didn't carry and I got to make that spare.
Did you, uh, you know, it seemed as though, and we've seen this from you before, you have always risen to the level of the guys you are bowling against, and Jeremy's as hot as anybody. You certainly were at that level through the entire match. Did you feel a little different knowing how well he's bowling? No, I mean, I didn't really think about it. I mean, I knew he was keeping up with me, and I can't ask for anything more to, to be in my hands to, to win it, and I just didn't come through. Well, Sue, you said it pretty well. When you're on a roll, sometimes you got to get a little lucky. Yeah, well, we've watched the ebbs and flows of your bowling, and um, we saw you switch balls, switch back again. What was that strategy about? In practice, every time I threw the ball, like hit, mid, hit the mid lane and hooked immediately. So going out of my own element, I tried to change balls, which didn't work, and then I said go back to what you've won five games already with and see if you can do it. All right, well, you gave yourself a chance, and, um, and it worked out for you. And it was bad for Mike, but, um, you know, good luck again next week. Thank you. Brian? Oh, good bowling, great match. Um, Here's a little something for you. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, and Brian's going to have a little more to give to Jeremy because we're not done with him yet. It is a nine match winning streak. He'll go for 10 next week. Sue and I'll get you ready when we return to Classic Lanes. You're watching Beat the Champ. Well, Sue, we've had some memorable moments on this show. That one ranks on the list of most memorable moments, and just the reaction from the crowd told you everything you needed to know. I know. We're not supposed to be speechless, but for that moment, we were actually speechless. But actually, he did everything right to get himself there. So, you know, that's just bowling. You never know what's going to happen. He's speechless because we know how good Mike Kemp is, and you feel so bad for him, but also speechless because, like you said, Jeremy Zimmerman has been such a fun guy to watch bowl, and part of that is getting a couple of lucky breaks. Yep, well, that's how this that's how this game works. you got to take advantage of things that come to you, and right now he's got to take advantage of what's happened and try to carry it on to another week. Well, and he's going to try because Jeremy will be back next week. You already <laughs> have got some swag here to dish yeah. out. So we always talk about how fun it is to come down and be part of the crowd, and and we have our new sponsor, Genesee Beer. And this week, everyone who's here is going to leave with a little koozie from Genesee. And that's just more reason to come on out, keep updated on Facebook, Twitter, and you'll see when our tapings are, and you guys can come on down. And you want to be here because we've had some amazing bowling yes. on all <laughs> kinds of levels, so you don't want to miss it. Make sure you're here. We'll be here because we're back next week as Jeremy tries to keep the winning streak alive for Sue and for Janelle and the rest of the gang here at WBBZ. We'll see you next week from Classic Lane here on Beat the Champ.